hot weather survival. You're headed out to backpack for the day, and you want to throw something in your pack that could protect you from the dangerously hot rays of the sun. But what are you going to bring along? Today we're going to test out four materials to see which is superior. All of them ultra lightweight, easy to pack. We've got some clear plastic. We've got an ultralight white plastic, a black plastic, and a thin reflective mylar. Which one will keep you coolest from the dangerous heat of the sun? Let's find out. The experimental setup's pretty simple today. I've got four different temperature sensors, and I've also got a stopwatch. In just a moment, my four different micro tents will be placed on top of the temperature sensors. A few observations as I conduct this test. When I walk past this foil tent, I get this blast of light and heat coming off of that. Man, it's like the sun shining at me from two sides. Don't get that with the black tent, the white tent, or the clear plastic. What could that mean? Let's go ahead and jump right into the data. The numbers in the circles indicate the total change in temperature in Celsius degrees. At first I take measurements in one minute increments all the way up to five minutes. Then I go ahead and jump to 10 minutes and finally to 20 minutes in order to get a good idea of what the change is going to be over a longer time. So the results are in and we have a clear winner. But what actually surprised me was not so much the winner as some of the losers. For instance, why did white material do so poorly? Let's go ahead and take a look at each one of these materials, starting with the worst and working our way up to our ultimate winner. So let's start out with the biggest loser, the clear plastic. A total temperature change of 10.7 degrees Celsius, which is almost 20 degrees Fahrenheit. So why did it do so bad? Well because it's transparent. It's clear. It's see-through. You see, materials that are transparent transmit light. They allow it to pass right through. And they allow it to pass through in a way that's largely unhindered. That's why we can see through transparent materials. Now, if the goal is to create a sun shade, transparent is the total opposite. The sun's energy passes right through, and then it gets kind of trapped inside our micro tent. What do you get? The greenhouse effect, not so good. The second worst performer in our competition was the black plastic, a total temperature change of 10.4 degrees, almost 19 degrees Celsius. But I believe that the black plastic performed poorly for a very different reason than the clear plastic. You see, the black plastic was much more opaque. Opaque is a term that refers to materials that do not allow light to transmit through them. Uh, for instance, this piece of wood is opaque. Now, although the black is not completely opaque, it does block a lot of the light from passing through. So why then did it do so poorly? Well, for a reason that most of you are probably already aware of. Black objects absorb a lot of light. And in absorbing that light, they convert it into heat, and that heat is then passed to the interior of the tent. Black, second worst performer. And now we come to the material that surprised me the most, in a kind of bad way. The white plastic, with a total change of 8.3 degrees Celsius, about 15 degrees Fahrenheit, you gotta ask the question, why did white perform so poorly? After all, isn't white supposed to reflect all of the different colors of the spectrum and that's why it looks white? Shouldn't it have done a whole lot better than that? Well, I think it comes down to the fact that our ultralight, ultra-thin plastic is just, well, just that, too thin. And as a result, it allows a whole bunch of light to pass through it. Now, it's not truly transparent. You can't really see through it. But a whole lot of light does get through. There's a word for a material like this, translucence. Think like a light shade or a lamp cover. A lot of light gets through, but it's scattered, kind of a soft light. So as a result, our white plastic allowed a lot of light to still get through, creating that greenhouse effect inside the tent. Now, it did perform better than the clear and the black, but not remarkably better. I'd be interested to know what an opaque material covered in white 
would have done in our competition. I bet it would have performed a whole lot better. And this brings us to the uncontested winner, the plastic foil. The only material that actually lowered the temperature of the tent by 1.5 degrees Celsius. And the only material that kept the tent below the temperature of the human body. How did it do this? Well, let's think about it. The foil is largely opaque. That means light does not pass through it, or at least not much light passes through it. The foil is also highly reflective which means the sun's energy bounces back off the surface and is not absorbed. Remember when I walked past the tent and I felt that blast of light and heat? That's because it was bouncing back or reflecting off the surface. The plastic foil was the only material that lowered the temperature of a tent. And it was the only material that kept the tent below the temperature of the human body. And that's kind of important if you're not trying to, say, cook yourself. So there you have it. The epic battle of the ultra light survival shelters has a clear and uncontested winner. If hot weather survival is on your agenda, make sure you pack along some ultra light reflective foil. Have fun, stay safe, and as always, stay curious, my friends. <laughs>